While there are plenty of existing canvases to choose from in the Miro template library, sometimes we just need to build our own. I've been building custom canvases for workshops in Miro since 2018, and today I'd like to share everything I've learned about it with you. A canvas is a visual template for some kind of thinking process, typically used in a meeting or workshop to keep discussion focused and make decision making easier. To build a custom canvas in Miro, the first thing is to recognize that the canvas is actually not the center of the experience. The people using it are. That means we need to understand who those people are and what they need. I recommend making a list of people you can imagine using your custom canvas so it's easy to keep them in mind as you design it. The next thing to think about is value. What promise can you make to your users about what they are going to get? What will they be able to do that they couldn't do before? Take time to think about this. Without a clear sense of what you're promising the canvas will do, it will be difficult to make sensible decisions later about its design. So, write your canvas promise down and keep it next to your list of users. A canvas is just a visual structure for a thinking process, so before we design the visual part, we need to define the step-by-step -step process we expect people to follow. Think about what information you expect to see as a result of each step and what exercises and discussion will have to happen to produce it. It may help to start from the end and work backwards. For example, when I built this Wardley mapping canvas, I knew I wanted people to end by making a Wardley map, but before that, they needed to have built a value chain, and before that, they needed a list of user needs, and so on. A little thoughtfulness here goes a long way, so take the time to think through it and get it right. Once you have a process, write a clear instruction prompt for each step. At a minimum, the prompt should be a unique label that makes distinguishing between the steps easy. At best, it should contain self-explanatory instructions for what to do. Once you've got prompts for each step, it's time to test the whole process. Why are we testing when we haven't even built the canvas yet? Well, you'll save a ton of headache if you catch obvious issues in the process now, before you've put a ton of work into the visual design. So pick one of the people your canvas is for and run through the whole thing step by step with that person in mind. For each step, will it be clear to them what to do? Will they feel it's worthwhile to do it? Will the output be useful? Once you've tested each step, refer back to your canvas promise. Overall, is this a process that can meet that promise? Keep working on it until it can. With that, it's time to finally build the canvas. Use the shape tool to make a box for each step in your process, and then copy in your written prompts. Size the boxes based on how many stickies you want people to be able to add. Just add some blank stickies to get a sense for spacing. And to avoid a very tedious problem with the scale of your canvas, make sure you're using one of Miro's standard sticky sizes when you're making this decision. I recommend using large stickies, that way you can always accommodate more responses if needed by switching to a smaller sticky size in the moment. From here, lay the boxes out in a way that suggests the order of the process. We want this to be intuitive, so think top to bottom and left to right. Play with the sizing and layout until you have something that feels good. And make use of Miro's alignment and distribution tools to line everything up and give it appropriate spacing. Now, let's test again. But this time, instead of just testing the process, we're also going to test the usability of its visual form. Test it on your own, but also try to do this with another person, ideally someone who would actually use the canvas. Walk through it together, paying attention to things like, was it clear to them where to start? Did they have enough room to work? Did they know what to do next? Where did they get confused? And remember the canvas promise? Did you keep that promise? Revise the visual layout, the prompts, and even the process itself as necessary. It's okay if it isn't perfect, especially if you're going to be available to help people when they get stuck. But the more the canvas can stand on its own, the better the experience will be for the people using it. If people are confused or embarrassed because they aren't sure what to do, that just drains their energy and goodwill and makes the canvas promise harder to keep. So if that happens, treat it like a design challenge and make it better. Once I'm happy with the basic design of the canvas, I like to create a background shape that gathers the steps into one cohesive thing, as if it were printed on a big piece of paper. Just create a big enough shape to contain all the boxes and send it to the back. This can give you a place to include information about each copy of the canvas that users fill out, like the date, who participated, etc. 
It also gives you room for information about the Canvas design itself, like what it's called, who designed it, contact information, and any disclaimers or licensing. Because I'm a little picky about text positioning and spacing, I like to separate the prompts from each step into their own text box so I can fine tune the layout. This also lets me do fancy things like have both a larger label that aids with navigation and a smaller text area with more detailed instructions. At this stage, you can also play with colors for the different parts of the canvas. Just make sure any text or user responses will be easy to read and stay away from colors that are too intense. Colors can enhance the aesthetic, but they shouldn't make the canvas harder to use. When in doubt, keep it simple. And there are many color palette generators out there if you need inspiration. Just keep colorblind folks in mind. It's way more prevalent than you think. Once you've cleaned the canvas up, don't forget that you can save it as a built-in Miro template, so you can add new copies to a board whenever you like. Now, before you start using the canvas in a meeting or workshop, lock it down. Otherwise, people will accidentally tear it apart when they click and drag to navigate around the board. That can feel chaotic, cause delays, and leave people feeling bad for messing up your beautiful canvas. So don't let that happen. Lock it down. Also consider adding a few blank stickies in each section of the canvas to help people know what to do. They'll appreciate it. If you want to play with the Wardley Mapping Canvas I was using as an example in this video, or if you want to browse the official Miro template library for inspiration, check out the links in the description. And if you're like me and you like to run large-scale workshops with many people and lots of canvases, there's a really nice trick to make managing your setup easier and to also keep Miro performance snappy. If you're curious about that, just click the video here. Fun fact, the same trick will work if you want to design a canvas in Miro and then use that same canvas in Mural or another virtual collaboration tool. Anyway, if you have questions about building canvases in Miro or if there's anything I missed, speak up in the comments or find me on Twitter. I'm always happy to help. Stay safe and have a lovely day.